This Open 5X is an open source project which aims to bring uh, 5X technology and make it more accessible. It's the work of Freddie Hong. He's a PhD student uh, from Imperial College London. Um, basically, he built this to assist his research. I'm just an undergrad researcher uh, working with him. In order to have two extra axes, we modified a, a, a Prusa. We dismantled the y, the y axis and, and added this gantry. This gantry um, contains the two extra motors which allow the U and the V axis to exist. So the U supermotor would be, would be placed here and enables rotation and tilt of the bed, of the printing bed would sit here. And then this other step motor here enables V axis to exist, which is the spin of the bed. Now with these two extra axes, you can imagine that you can do more, way more complex stuff and way more complex geometry. For the, in terms of control, we use a Duet 2. It's just extra drivers for the extra stepper motors that we have. We have some config files and extra settings that we designed for the machine, but they are all open source as well. So you can find them in the, in the GitHub repo as well. Um, as I said also, because it's open source, we have also a list of materials and uh, all the components, and that's also on the GitHub repo. So right now we have a, a Hemera uh, from ET3 Hotend. Um, the nozzle though is from no, non-planar XYZ. So those guys uh, manufacture nozzles for non-planar applications, obviously. We need to avoid collision, essentially, right? So having this thin nozzle, which is a 0.4, I believe, uh, allows us to, to, to do this. It's very important to have a long, conical, very sharp nozzle. Uh, and, and basically elevating and increasing the distance from the printing head to the, to the printing piece. As you can see, the hardware is there. So the hardware exists, the hardware is happening. The biggest barrier for this technology and for the project itself is the software. Uh, so we use a custom Grasshopper script, uh, which allows us to do the slicing. Uh, we, you basically input a substrate geometry and, and a path, and it figures out the inverse kinematics, which then allow you to generate a, a G-code file. It's hard to generalize something like this uh, in terms of slicing. Right now, we, uh, we, are, we can do uh, geometry which is normal to a surface. So as you can see here, you have a substrate geometry, and then you have some path which is obviously normal to the surface. But yeah, and hopefully by making this open source, getting community involved, we can manage uh, to, to develop more tools uh, uh, with the community, of course. Uh, we, we need some help from people <laughs> to do this, uh, and we need people using these machines, experimenting with them, and, and creating that demand and incentive for the software tools to be developed, because the, the hardware is there. It's now a matter of getting the software the path generation and the digital generation. All, all the web boards have um, web controls. Here I have access to all the settings, uh, all the axes. You got the, the five axes there, the temperature, etc., etc. I just upload the, the G code and let, let it go. So yeah, this is the, the controller of the printer. Now, this is the, the Rhino and the slicer. So this is the, the preview of the Grasshopper file. Let me show you what the Rhino geometry looks like. It's, it's kind of full control. And I, I personally like that a bit more because it gives me more freedom as a designer to generate whatever I want. So yeah, here, as you can see, there's the two main things I mentioned. You have your subset geometry, which is a, a poly surface, and then we have paths. So these are all uh, different paths. They are continuous paths, like in, in base mode sort of thing. Uh, and then I input this and this into the script and basically uh, is able to compute all of, all of the index kinematics. So let me show you now the grasshopper. So I hit the preview, but yeah, this, this is after it's computed. So we have a little um, preview of the path. This is the grasshopper definition, so this is the slicer. Here is where you input the, um, the substrate. So as you can see, that's the substrate. And then here I've got the paths. I mean, it's quite laggy because it's a lot of paths. But it, the key thing also is that it shows the travels, which is very important to avoid collisions and, and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, and everything moves. So this geometry is, is, is not like the one we were showing earlier. It's mostly 90 degrees and then building on it. But also the, the gantry in the simulation also rotates. So it's a good way of, of previewing it. The path can be generated in different ways. You can just do it manually if you want. For the propeller, I, I put, um, made the substrate, attach some sort of rectangle to it, and then using Grasshopper, I slice that rectangle and then made all a continuous path, so it'd be like a vase. The important part, though, is this part. So this is the, 
the G code file that you end up at, um, having at the end. Here is the, the start G code, temperature and other stuff. And this is the end G code as well. Yeah. After you've input all of those things, then you end up with your final G code files, which then you can upload to the Duet and print. The only drawback is that it's not open source. So you need a, a license to get Rhino and hence a license to get Grasshopper, which is, is the current open source limitation we have. Uh, so that's why we need people. <laughs> to build software tools for this. Right now, um, at this current version of Open5x, we haven't got end stops. XY homing in, in 5 axis printing is way more important than in planar printing. You have to think that an offset on the XY, then when you go 90 degrees, translate into an offset on the, on the Z, uh, which then creates adhering problems because you, your thing is too high or too close. That, that's one of the challenges that most people will face with this, is finding the absolute zero on the hardware. Yes, um, so the, it's an open source project. Make sure to check out the, the QR code. Uh, you know, we want people to, we want to be a community around this project. We want to have people building their, uh, these machines, we want people playing with them, developing their own software tools, uh, you know, look, going into the repo, checking the bill of materials, checking the, the Grasshopper uh, scripts, and, and giving it a go. Yeah, definitely. And if you're about to get into your next project and need a tool to design it in, check out the sponsor of this video, Onshape. Now, I've been using Onshape in the past and thankfully they have committed to making their tools available to makers and creators for free. Onshape is a collaborative CAD package that completely runs in your browser. So there's nothing to install and it works seamlessly on any device that has a modern browser. Of course, you get a fully featured CAD workspace right from the start, but Onshape is also incredibly extensible with plugins that cover everything from CAM over simulation to parts libraries. And it comes with a full scripting language, so it should be possible to even create a full G-code processor for something like the Open 5X right inside Onshape. It is a great free CAD package if you're creating designs intended to be shared with the world, but with their paid plans, you'll get their brand new built-in simulation tools and pro features like PDM or PLM that will help you make a successful product. Check out Onshape at the link below. That's it. Thanks for watching, keep on making, and I'll see you in the next one.